Hey guys, here is lesson 6.7, subtraction with, re with renaming, sorry. Um, how can you use renaming to find the difference of two mixed numbers? So this is something a little bit different. We've kind of talked a little bit about it, um, but not a whole lot. So it says, to practice for a race, Kara is running two and a half miles. When she reaches the end of her street, she knows that she has already run one and five, six miles. How many miles does Kara have left to run? So I have two and a half miles is her total, and she knows that she's already run one and five, six. So how many miles does Kara have left to run? That's what we're trying to figure out. So we know when we're doing this, we would be using subtraction as our um, operation. Okay. So now we're going to look and we are going to rename the first mixed number. Uh, but before we do that, we are going to, uh, first we're going to estimate the difference. So I know that two and a half is, if we estimated that, that would be two and a half, minus one and five, six. I know that five, six is close to one. And then one plus one is two, so I would subtract two. So our answer would be about one half. So the next step we're going to do is find a common denominator. Use the common denominator to write an equivalent fraction with like denominators. So what they did, they've already done the hard part for us with finding our common denominator. They found our common denominator was 12, so they went ahead and rewrote our, um, our fractions as equivalent fractions. Now our third step is to rename 2 and 6 twelfths as a mixed number with a fraction greater than 1. Because we're doing it, because when we look at this, we cannot subtract 10 from 6. If I had 6 apples, you cannot take 10 away from me. So basically what we're doing, instead of renaming, we could also say with regrouping. We're regrouping the fractions, so we're going to learn how to regroup the fractions. So with this one, it says to think six, 2 and 6 twelfths, which is what we have, is 1 plus 1 plus 6 twelfths, which equals 1 plus 12 twelfths plus 6 twelfths equals 1 and 18 twelfths. Basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this whole number, I'm taking one whole away from it, so I'm left with one whole. Now, if I have a fraction that's equal to 1 and has a denominator of 12, I know that I have 12 twelfths plus my 6 twelfths that I already have. That would give me 1 and 18 twelfths. And that's what we're going to use. We've regrouped, so now we're going to write it in. So I have 1 and 18 twelfths, or sorry, yeah, twelfths. I almost wrote 24th. That was not the correct thing. So now I have 1 and 18 twelfths. Now I can subtract. I can take 10 away from 18. So now I have 18 minus 10 is 8 twelfths. 1 minus 1 is 0, so I have nothing left right there. But I know I can reduce my 8 twelfths. So if I divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2, I'm left with 4 sixths. I can still divide both the 4 and the 6 by 2. So let's divide both of those by 2 again, which gives me 2 thirds. So our answer would be, our final answer would be 2 thirds. And that's what we did. We just found the difference of the fractions. Then find the difference of the whole numbers, write the answer in simplest form, and make sure you check to make sure your answer is reasonable. So we said our answer is probably going to be about one half, and we said it would be two thirds, which is around one half. So she has two thirds mile left to run. Okay. Let's go ahead and flip to the back of that page, and here's another example. This one says, rename both mixed numbers as a fraction greater than 1. So the first thing it says to do is to subtract 2 and a half minus 1 and 5, 6. So we're going to write equivalent fractions using the common denominator. All right, so if I list out my multiples of 2 and 6, 
I have two, four, six, eight, and this one I would have six, 12, and I already know that six is a common uh, multiple of both of those. So I'm gonna use that as my denominator. So I'm going to have six. I know that two times three gives me six, so one times three is going to give me three. Bring my two over here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with one and five, six, except I don't have to change anything because I know that's already I six. Now it says rename both mixed numbers as a fraction greater than one. So what I could do is I can say, six times one is six plus five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a little multiplication sign and then a little plus sign. So six times one is six plus five is 11. So that would be 11 six. And then six times two, we start at your denominator and multiply your whole number. Six times two is 12. And then you add whatever's on top. So six times two is 12 plus three is 15. So now I have 15 six, and then I can subtract that. So now I have 15 six minus 11 six is going to give me four six. And then if I reduce four six down, divide by two, divide both sides by two, that's gonna give me two thirds. So my answer would be two thirds. I, it just, it just matter, it doesn't matter which way you do it as long as you do it correctly. Um, I feel like sometimes this way is a little bit easier than the regrouping method. Um, but like I said, whichever one you feel more comfortable doing is what you should do. Um, so let's do a couple examples of a couple ways. We're going to do it both ways a couple different times. So with this one, let's go ahead and do our estimate. Our estimate, if we have three-fourths, that's close to one, so one plus one is two. So I have two minus seven-eighths is close to one, so that would be one, so two minus one equals one. That's our estimate. Now let's actually subtract. So now I have a four and I have an eight. I didn't mean to put that bar there but it is what it is all right so I know I have 4 8 12 16 and this is going to be 8 16 I'm just going to circle my 8 because I already know that's my least common so now I have 8 and 8 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the first way they taught us how so now I have 1 and I know I'm going to multiply my 2 my 4 times 2 to get 8 so I know 2 times 3 is 6 1 and 6 eighths minus 7 eighths I know I cannot subtract 1 and 6 eighths one and, I can't subtract 7 eighths from 1 and 6 eighths so I have to regroup so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cross this out make it a zero now I have 8 eighths plus my six eighths. Eight eighths plus six eighths is going to give me 14 eighths. Now 14 eighths minus seven eighths. So I'm gonna rewrite it. 14 eighths minus seven eighths is gonna give me seven eighths. So, which would be close to our estimate. So we know that this would be the correct answer or it is a reasonable answer. All right, so let's do this next one. We're gonna do it um, the way we did renaming both of them as a mixed fraction. So I know I have 12 and 1 ninth. If I estimate that, 1 ninth is close to zero, so I'm gonna have 12 minus 1 third is close to zero, so I'm gonna have seven. So 12 minus seven is five. So there's my estimate. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and make each uh, first thing I have to do is I have to find my common denominator. I have a 9 and I have a 3. 9, 18, 3, 6, 9. Eventually you won't have to do this every time. You'll already know, hey, I know this is my common denominator. Um, but for right now, let's keep doing that. 
All right, so now I have nine, this stays the same, 12 and 1 ninth minus, now I know I'm multiplying this times three, so this will be times three, so that's seven and three ninths. Now, what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm going to um, make both of them improper fractions or fractions greater than one. So I have, what you do is you multiply your denominator times your whole number, so I know 12 times 9 is 72, nope, not 72, 108, I'm losing it, plus my 1 is 109, 109 ninths minus, now I'm going to do the same thing, 9 times 7 is 63, plus 3, 63, 64, 65, 66, so I have 66 ninths, and then I would subtract it. So I can do that over here, minus 66. So that's a three, that's a four. So now I have 43 ninths. Now, that's not the simplest form. I know that nine will go into 43 how many times? It'll go into it four times, four times nine is 36, so now I have 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, I have seven left over, so it would be four and seven ninths, which is close to five, so that works. Like I said, it just depends on which way you would rather do it, which way you feel more comfortable doing it, as to what way you want to do it, okay? All right, so now I want you to try to do number three on your own. You can pick which way you do it, and I will we'll check and see. So go ahead and pause the video and then check. All right, so the answer for this first one was seven-tenths. Okay. Hopefully you got that one correct. So let's go ahead, and I want you to pause the video and then check your answer on number four. All right, here's your answer for number four. All right, like I said, if you have any questions, you need to make sure you come on, even if it's in the middle of this video, you need to make sure you pop on and say, hey, Ms. O, I'm still not getting this. Can you help me out? Um, you know I'll help you out. All right, so on your own, because hopefully you have this. If you don't, you can come do these numbers with me. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's all I'm going to get you to do. I'm just getting you to do 5 through 10. If you still need extra practice, do these ones at the bottom. And remember, you're writing it in simplest form. So when you type your answer into the Google um, Doc or the Google Form, make sure it is in simplest terms. All right, guys, good luck. You've got this. If you have any questions, pop on to Google Meet. I'll see you later.